The recent death of squadron leader Mahinda Singh Puji marks the passing of the last of the Indian Royal Air Force fighter pilots who served in World War II. The following film celebrates a history of Sikh fighter pilots. In 1910, just seven years after the world's first ever flight, Bhupinder Singh, the Maharaja of Patiala, became the first Indian to bring aeroplanes to India. One of these was a farm and biplane. Though cumbersome and risky to fly, it was regarded as the cutting edge of aeronautical engineering. The pioneers of aviation in India were Sikhs. Yeah, I mean, uh, it wasn't planned that way, it happened that way. The first Sikh to fly and to apply to be a fighter pilot in World War I was Hardit Singh Malik. He finished Oxford in 1916 and he found that uh, most of the people that he knew had joined up because the war was the thing that was happening and the all the, the British certainly had joined up. And he wanted, he felt this was a very, very big thing and a very important event. And he wanted to be part of it. And I also did that this is a very big event in world history. So I must take a part of it. In this way, I tried to go to someone else in a way. Malik was posted to number 28 squadron under Captain William G. Barker's command, who was then regarded as one of the finest fighter pilots of the war. On the 26th of October 1917, Captain Barker selected Malik as his wingman and took him and another pilot called Fenton on a rather ill thought out operation over the lines in poor weather. And they suddenly, they came into a clear patch of sky and they found the Germans had, had the same idea. So they were suddenly surrounded, there were only two of them, and they were suddenly surrounded by a whole lot of Germans. So they engaged in, in a fight and um, they got separated. And my father shot down, I think, a couple of Germans and he was being shot at. So there were four German fighter planes. लग गए तो उन्होंने शूटिंग शुरू कर दिया मैं कुछ नहीं कर सकता था और इस सिलसिले में करीबन 400 बुलेट्स मेरी प्लेन को लगी लेकिन मुझे फिर नहीं लगी गोली और ना ही कोई गोली ऐसी जगह लगी कि प्लेन शूट डाउन हो जाए एक इसम का मिरेकल था मालिक और बार्कर वर बोथ शॉट डाउन बट वर लकी टू स्टे अलाइव इन फैक्ट Malik was the only Indian fighter pilot to survive the First World War. They are fast indeed, taking off at 120 miles an hour and cruising at over four miles a minute. It is fighters like these that the rapidly growing Indian Air Force needs. They look beautiful, but Germany has discovered what deadliness lies behind their sleek and lovely lines. While the Indian Air Force was preparing for the eastern assault from the Japanese in Burma, the Nazis were taking over Europe and the Blitz had started in London. They needed volunteers. They needed volunteers to form what they called a volunteer reserve. These were, would be young Indians from good colleges and schools in North India, largely, and they were uh, selected, given a crash course in flying. Mahinda Singh Pooj was one of 24 Indians who came to fight with the Royal Air Force in the United Kingdom. He was given a very warm reception by the British people when he arrived. They were grateful he'd come 
Um, they were probably quite relieved that the British Empire could, was still there and could throw up men like him. And he was a little exotic as well. Fighter pilots were much in demand, especially during the Blitz time. It was the fighters who uh, prevented the German bombers from coming over England. Puji was a fighter pilot at a time when they were considered heroes. They'd saved the country from the Germans during the Battle of Britain. They were undeniably glamorous, they were effective and they were necessary. Every boy in the Empire and the Commonwealth wanted to be a, a fighter pilot and they were exceptionally interesting to the opposite sex. I was a, always a very favorite young man for ladies, whether in India or here, I was very lucky. My turban became my passport for all the privileges in England. <laughs> See, if there was a rationing, there no, no sugar available, but if I go into the restaurant, sugar was given to me. And everybody would say, no, sir, you're fighting for us. I mean, see, my turban with the RAF wing, wing attracted a lot, lot of attention and all in my favor. In, among the 24 who were selected, uh, I personally think six or seven were Sikh pilots. My roommate was Gurbachan Singh. We called him G.B. Singh. He was a government college Lahore student and uh, a brilliant swimmer and, and very smart young man. Then there were Trilochan Singh. He had joined the bombers and he was shot down and killed. Manmohan Singh. Manmohan Singh was one of the pioneer six. He, he was an experienced pilot who had flown from uh, New Delhi to London solo by himself, which was a feat during those days. And he was among us. He was killed while flying a flying boat. With fighter pilots having the highest number of fatalities, many of Puji's colleagues were killed in combat. Out of the 24 volunteers, Puji was one of the only two fighter pilots to survive the war. There were many instances with me while fighting the enemy when I had given up hope that I will be able to come back and land safely. On one or two occasions, there was almost, I'm, I had almost killed myself. During a mission escorting bombers to Berlin, Puji's team encountered enemy fighters while flying over occupied France. After a series of dogfights, Puji found himself lost and alone and out of radio contact. Realizing he was out of fuel, Puji decided to evacuate the plane. But before jumping out, he decided to send the following message. If my body is found in the morning, I would request that it may not be sent back to India. I don't want my relations and friends and my parents to grieve over me like that. It should be cremated here in this country. I gave a big lecture. I'm surprised how I could do that at a time at about 25,000 feet. So I climbed up on my seat. Naturally, I was sitting like that. So I have to climb up on the seat to be able to jump out. So I put my one foot up on the seat. And before I could put the second foot, I discovered that my radio wire was still connected. It was not disconnected. My uh, communication with uh, the control was still probably on. So just a splash came to me. I said, I, let me tell them that my latest position, because I had spoken to them about four, four, three, four minutes earlier, and we were, I was flying 200 miles an hour. So it could be different. So I said, let me tell them where I am now. So I said, well, here is the place, and I'm going to jump. Bye-bye. And immediately a sound, a voice 
of a young woman came back, don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. And uh, you're not very far from our airport. We will make every effort to get you back here. So I said, oh, well, that's fine. Thank you. And I sat back in my seat. Luckily, Puji was not far from an airstrip that he could reach safely without fuel. Puji is interesting because he fights all over the world in support of the British Empire and Commonwealth. He is a fighter pilot in the United Kingdom and is engaged on escort duties and sweeps over Europe. From there, he's sent to the Middle East, where he flies fighter aircraft against the Germans and Italians. And on from there, he goes to Burma, where he fights against the Japanese. This is the stuff that's getting back Burma. You're facing a very professional and uh, treacherous enemy. You're, I mean, the Japanese were first-rate fighters. There's no saying that the Japanese were, uh, you know, uh, were, were easy enemy. They were not. They were. They were. They, they, they licked the daylights out of the Allies, as you know, in the first three years of the war. They took Singapore, Malaya, Hong Kong. They, they, they took the whole of Southeast Asia. They took Indonesia. They, they'd gone up to the gates of India, and then commanded a squadron which was all Indian, number four squadron. And that was the last squadron I participated in during the war, in which uh, I have a, of which I have a notable record, and I've done many things which other pilots haven't done. One of Puji's finest achievements was saving 300 US troops lost in the Burmese jungle. He was personally requested to find them after a three-day U.S. search party failed. I went towards the Japanese side, which was never allowed, and I flew from the Japanese side towards our side. In, my intention was that Japanese should not suspect. I'll be flying very low, and by the time Japanese look at me, I'll be gone. And then I went over the forest, which was in dispute. And I found the soldiers, which was something wonderful for everybody. 300 soldiers without ration, without food, without radio. Lost in the jungle, they were surrounded by Japanese. And I, I circled over the Japanese and tried to kill one or two also. Puji won his distinguished flying cross over Burma as a flight commander of number six squadron. His citation read, Flight Lieutenant Puji has shown himself to be a determined and skillful pilot who has always displayed outstanding leadership and courage. Puji was only one of the legendary Sikh pilots posted to Burma. At this time, Arjun Singh was leading the infamous number one squadron. And Mir Singh led number six squadron in operations in the Arakan. Air Chief Marshal Richard Pierce called an urgent meeting with the Indian Air Force squadron leaders. Interestingly, Five of the seven leaders were Sikh, including Arjun, Pritipal, and Mayor Singh. For instance, the way these men pay flying visits is news to us. One of them got his signal to attend this conference late the night before. He hopped into his plane, flew a thousand miles straight through a moonless night, and got there in time for an early breakfast. <laughs> Wherever the British fought in the world wars, the Sikhs were there. In the First World War, they fought in France, in Mesopotamia, Iraq, the Mediterranean, the Middle East. The Second World War saw them in Burma, in Italy, 
in North Africa. The fact that Sikhs have been pioneers in the Air Force is not a surprise. The Sikhs are natural warriors. Courage comes to them as a given. It's not that they are, uh, they're, they're, they're are brave soldiers everywhere, every community of the world, every... But the, the, for the Sikhs, it's kind of natural. Because the history which I learned was that Sikhs were created only for the uh, purpose of fighting, only for the, for the purpose of protecting the weaker people. That is because the, we were all Hindus before that. So that impression I always had and everybody else, that they all say that Sikhs are fighters and we were strong and we were brave, we were not afraid.